Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to take a look at uh, Fed rates as uh, the CPI and, C and core CPI came out. And we're going to take a look at a parallel between 2019 and, of course, now as we took a look at uh, the Fed rates as they were being raised back then and what happened in that time frame as we went into a Bitcoin 3 to 4x and also a recession. So let's just jump right in. Now, as everybody knows, I think everybody's already heard if you're on Twitter, or if you're on YouTube, or if you have any social media presence and you're interested in this, uh, you know that CPI came out, and um, actually not too bad. I mean, there was an expectations of 3.6, but we had 3.7. So you know, people, some people are freaking out. Some people are like this is not a big deal. Some people say this is the end all be all. I don't really see this as that much of a thing. I do think that uh, the Fed will slow down and they will pause. They will continue that in November. But in all honesty, when I took a look at this, I'm like, you know, uh, the Fed's doing its job. I know some people, a lot of people don't like Jerome Powell, but in all honesty, if we take a look all the way back in October, we we're at 7.7. I mean, they cut it in half. And it took a while, but I mean, just look how, how long it had to do in, in the 70s and, eight, and 80s with Volcker when they got to uh, inflation out of control. And they let it get out of control because of the prior chair, which was Burns. So I think they're doing the things that they're supposed to do. Now, of course, they're going to break stuff. And that's when they'll pivot. And that's when we'll have, of course, a recession. But these are the things that we have. Now, if we want to dig deep into the numbers, which I really don't, I link this uh, in the description. This is the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. And you can just see that, uh, you know, food and energy, uh, actually, energy wasn't, was actually a negative 0.5. Food was uh, one of the big contributing factors. And then there was some uh, negativity as far as used cars, down eight. New vehicles up 2.5. And then, of course, everything across the board. And shelter uh, was one of the big ones at 7.2. There's nuances to that. I'm not going to get into it. It's just that's it is what it is. And again, just looking at this across a continuum of time, uh, the Fed was facing out in June 2022 uh, the rate of inflation of 9.1%. And again, they did a pretty good job. Now, back here, same thing happened in uh, 2005, 2006. And of course, when we had the, uh, uh, the Great Recession, uh, they were cutting rates and they were trying to do the best they could do. And what really helped them out? This little gray area? That's a recession. And I think it's going to happen again. And I think that's what's going to save the bacon of the Fed. But uh, time will tell. So again, if we break this out into the, into the CPA and we steal from Ben's site into the cryptoverse, uh, actually, this doesn't look right. We got to do year over year, percentages right, okay. And then eh, we'll leave the, the S&P 5. Nah, I don't want to do that. Let's just do crypto and put it into Bitcoin. That's what I like about the site. You can do whatever you want to. You can put, you know, overlay different factors. You can do a workbench and, and overlay other things. Anyhow, CPI difference, uh, last month, 3.71, 3.69. So yeah, and then we take a look at core CPI. If we strip out energy and food, again, this isn't right, year over year, percentage, Let's do uh, crypto to Bitcoin again. Why not? And of course, CPI in actuality, whoops, year over year, it is doing pretty well. So we strip out energy and food, <clears throat> oil going crazy, I think. Uh, 4.7 in July, 4.39 in August, and then now we're at 4.1. So look, positive things on the horizon. That's great. Everybody's happy. But this is why you're here. You're here because of this title and this thumbnail that I sent out, or maybe you're just here because you like to hang out and uh, do the Q&A and we talk and all those things. Whatever it is, this is the good stuff. So this is when we take a look at history. History, of course, is not perfect, especially in finance. It uh, has, a, has a certain rhythm, and it's not uh, going to be 100% accurate, but like they say, history does run. And here's the information we have. So Fed policymakers have been offering a dovish respite. On Tuesday, Atlanta Fed Bank President Rafael Bostic and Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, both of them said, I didn't know if Kashkari said this, but both of them said that the central bank may not need to raise rates further. Again, it's the same thing in the FOMC minutes where they said the exact same thing. Now, at some point they're gonna have to raise again or they're gonna have to pivot, but uh, it's not gonna be in November. I'm not sure about December, but this is pretty good news, especially for the markets. The Fed's previous rate cycle, which ran for three years, saw rates peak at 2.5% in December 2018. I had totally forgot about that, probably because I wasn't paying attention back then, because I really was barely getting into crypto in 2017. I didn't really care about the Fed rates or anything like that, because 
that wasn't a, a big situation for me. Now I think everybody knows about uh, the Fed race, Fed rates and core CPI and CPI numbers and everybody's, everybody's names in the Fed Reserve because we were in that type of market. This was following which the central bank adopted a wait and watch mode for seven months. So in 2018, they did a little stay and there was a wait and watch mode as they looked at the data. Bitcoin bottomed out in December 2018 and then rose to 13,880 by the end of June. Reflecting back in 2019, the Fed concluded its rate hiking cycle and entered a seven month pause during this period, Bitcoin experienced dramatic rally, blah, blah, blah. So I was looking at this and I never believe anybody. I never like, I'm like, well, that sounds good, but let's take a look at it. And in all honesty, <laughs> the, uh, the month of October, what, were we supposed to be Rectember and then October? Well, it has been so far. Now, there is atrocities being committed in the Middle East, horrible situation over there. I'm not a geopolitical analyst. I am not going to weigh in on that. You can, if you want to debate that or have something, just go to Twitter. There's a lot of geniuses and experts over there that became experts overnight. I'm not that guy. I can just tell you that the market right now is down a little bit negative. And of course, if we take a look at what the probabilities are for raising rates next month, which would be the first of November for the next Fed meeting, it's everybody's pricing in as it's not going to happen. Does that mean we go the opposite way? Not for sure, but the data is pointing that they're going to have a pause and no pivot and no raise. So again, if we take a look at this, that article we took to look at uh, in 2018, uh, how they are raising rates and, and moving forward. Actually, I'm gonna blow this whole thing up because I wanna talk about recessions and the Fed funds rate. So let's just go from, let's go all the way back in, wanna go 90? Yeah, why not? Look at this. This is the federal funds rate. And they kind of got it right. Well, they didn't get it right in the first time. The first time around in 1990, and of course, going back in the 80s, I'm not gonna go all, go all the way down there. But you can see the, Fed, the federal funds rate, it was elevated, elevated, they dropped off a little bit. And they were supposed to pivot, but then they kind of screwed everything up. And this little gray area is a recession. So they actually were raising rates in the recession. <laughs> so, and it was a bad one back in the early, early 90s. And of course, once they figured it out, like, wow, well, recession, then they dropped off. Same thing happened over here, but I think they got it right a little better. They were raising rates. Inflation was becoming out of control. Fed rates went up. And they said, whoops, I think we did something wrong. And then they, they pivoted. And then here comes the recession in the dot-com era, right? And then, of course, it dropped down. And they said, OK, we're after the recession. We're good. We're going to cut rates. And then inflation went up again. Let's raise some rates. Did the same thing. It flattens out. And they're like, whoops, we broke something. And then, of course, that's when we had the Great Recession, all the problems with the housing and whatnot. And of course, you had a recession right here. And now what they talked about, I'm gonna blow this up even more so we can see a little better. Yeah, I mean, in 2017, the Fed funds rate was going up. I totally forgot. And uh, we can see that over time, federal funds rate, I mean, it was, it was essentially zero, right? Essentially zero, nothing was happening, but inflation must've been getting a little bit, uh, a little bit elevated, so they started to raise and raise and raise. And what do I have? This is the S&P 500, let's get this out of here. Let's put on crypto, let's put on Bitcoin. I think that's more relevant to us, right? And we can see that even though the rates were being raised, there was still, a slight amount of quantitative easing going on. I, you know what I need to do is we're going to overlay the M2 money supply at some point. And you see that here we go. And then of course it drops off. And then every cycle, well, so far, dependent, I guess, not, not this one I get, I can say, is that usually a year after the all-time high, which in 2013 took about a year to hit the, the all-time low, the low for the cycle for Bitcoin. 2017, it took another year to hit an all-time low for Bitcoin, we were at almost 20,000. Then we come down here to 2018, the Bitcoin price was, wow, 3,220. Those were good days. I remember buying Bitcoin at that point. Ah, the good times. So anyhow, just like they talked about, you have here, you have here. And what the Fed did as they're raising rates, they're like, you know what, we should probably hold off a second and let's just pause. And they paused. FUD's rate was 2.4. They kind of just looked at the data, which is what they're saying now. They're, going to like, they're saying, we're going to look at the data, make sure everything's good. If, if uh, you know, if inflation starts to goes up, go up, 
core CPI or CPI starts to increase, we will do our best to raise rates and make things sticky. And hopefully, and of course, they want to crush the labor market. I don't want to crush the labor market. That's all I want to do. But then here we go. And then Bitcoin itself, over that time, everything kind of settles down. And then what happens? It actually wasn't a 3x. It was a, well, roughly, 3.5x, somewhere around there. So I'm from 3,200 all the way up to almost 12,000. That's pretty good. And then with the funds rate, they go, ah, maybe we broke something. And then they pivoted. And they came over here and said, no, we didn't do it. And they came down. And this is where the indecisiveness kind of causes for, for Bitcoin. But I will remind everybody that even though we had a nice monstrous rally, that's the whole point of this, of this video talking about it, you will notice that around here, there was a recession. And that recession was caused by the Cervasa virus, right? And then at that point, then the Fed's like, we really screwed up or whatever happened with this virus, however it got loosened. If it was a, you know, some kind of lab in China, which I think, but whatever. Then uh, they reduced the rates, they pivoted and down it went. And then of course we know what happens, quantitative easing came out and the Bitcoin went up. But it is interesting though, that at this same point where we are, the, the Fed is, is pausing, we could see how Bitcoin could potentially go up. Now, right now it's not doing that because of the instability and the unknowns that are happening in the Middle East. But I have to wonder if it wasn't for that and the Fed was pausing, where would we be at right now? And I will say that even though the atrocities are happening right over there and it is awful, it's bad, it seems like when we get into these wars, it's always the worst case scenario in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, as time goes on, people are like, oh, it's not that big. And then things kind of slow down. Look what happened. Do you guys remember when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine? It was like the worst thing of all time. And it was going to be, of course, World War III. Now it's the same thing here that's happening in the Middle East. I, I'm not going to weigh into it. I'm just saying that it always seems like it's, it's the worst time. And could it be World War III? Yeah, it could. I have no idea what's going to happen. But when I take a look at him, like, I see the parallels of what's happening, and I see that um, what could effectively happen in the future. But right now, if things do calm down, I could see some positivity coming forward. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. It's just a little, little piece about how things start to keep repeating and repeating and rhyming and rhyming. And if we still see what the Fed just doing this, maybe we could see a little bit of a, of a rally. All right, so that is that for that piece. And then lastly, I think lastly, yeah. Then we'll do a QA. I want to make this this short because we've been doing like the last three or four days has been very long streams. As a reminder, uh, today is the 12th. Yeah, the 12th. Tomorrow is the cutoff day to enter for the uh, Sweatcoin giveaway. I'm giving away 100,000 Sweatcoin. They are, it's going to be 20 people, 5,000. They'll get 20 people will get 5,000 Sweatcoin. And you also, there'll also be 10 NFTs up for grabs. All you got to do is a link in the description. Very, it's at the top. On Twitter, follow me, Sweat Economy, comment below and retweet, and then enter the form right here. And that's it. And I'll draw them on Saturday, October 14th. The cutoff is tomorrow night at 2359 UTC. I don't know where that is for you, but I'm just letting you know. So if you want to get in on that, I mean, there's 20 winners. Actually, 30, actually there's 30 winners because 20 winners get 5,000 sweat coin, and then you get 10 with the NFTs. Please do so. And also... Uh, I know people are like, well, you know, how does Sweatcoin work? There's a link in the description for the deep dive. I'm super biased in this project because I own a bunch of it. So that should be uh, not a surprise to anybody. But uh, they are partnering up with Orderly. I thought it was interesting because Orderly is a, it's a DeFi platform, trading infrastructure. And they're going to allow, it looks like on the wallet, which will be available to me as a U.S. citizen on the 17th, is that they're going to allow for swaps within their wallet, I guess in a DeFi protocol way. And you can use Sweatcoin for NEAR, uh, NEAR for ETH, and then down here, it's hard to see, but Euro for Sweatcoin. And it uh, looks like there's an on and off ramp. The thing that I'm thinking of, and I'm gonna have these guys some orderly on, is wouldn't it be cool if you could use Sweatcoin that you just walk and you earn the Sweatcoin through the app because it's a 100% free app. 
I go, I, I take that back. Nothing's hundred percent free. Like YouTube, you still gotta, you still gotta watch ads, right? It's the same thing with, with, with sweat coin. You still have to watch ads and stuff like that. But what if you could use the sweat coin as the gas for all the swaps that you do on orderly? Now that'd be something you walk a little bit. You're like, oh, I don't have enough for, for gas, quote unquote. And then you just go walk around. You got enough and then you can swap out stuff. I don't know. That was pretty interesting. And that's it for today. So look, Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you.